This is Clara. Clara lives a pretty normal life. She goes to school, work, she cooks, she hangs out with her family. Today she's going to visit her friend Grace. Clara and Grace have been friends for quite a while. They've been through a lot together, they've laughed together, cried together. Clara laughs at all of Grace's jokes, even if Grace doesn't realize she's told any. I think that's the beauty of their friendship, is that they kind of balance each other out. They're pretty opposite in many ways, but similar in the ways that matter. The girls love to read together, and so that's usually one of the things on their list to do. But I don't know how much reading they actually get done when they're together. It appears to me that they spend a lot more time giggling, laughing, and pointing out what's happening in the other person's book. Now every time Claire visits, they do enjoy a cup of tea. Uh, but Grace always insists on cleaning the dishes. Today she even picked some grapefruit, so they're going to enjoy some of that later. And during this time, Clara actually reads her book. But when Clara reads, she becomes the character. That's what happened today. She's reading a classic murder mystery. She imagines her and Grace flourishing in the 50s. They're detectives. And they are really just like they are now, just back in that time period. But she never imagines that Grace is the one who will be murdered. This puts Clara in a hard position. Having to solve the mystery of her friend's murder while still mourning her death, she begins sleuthing around and searching for answers. What was the motive? Why Grace? Who's next? Could it be her? Why did her best friend have to die, and so unfairly? Isn't it kind of ironic that her best friend was a detective, but yet she's been killed? Clara searches everywhere, high and low, looking for these answers. You know, she feels like she's really beginning to come to a block. She sits down to look at some old manuals, and that's whenever she realizes that maybe this hasn't happened. She looks around, and she notices her friend's not lying on the floor anymore. She begins searching the house, and when she finds Grace, she's flooded with relief and joy. Uh, things just begin to bubble out of her mouth, telling her what happened and what she thought and why she's so overwhelmed and, and that her friend's alive and she's celebrating and she's so excited and, and that's the end.